Daria and Tony, may you enjoy a lifetime of sunrises and sunsets. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you Daria and Tony Baranato! The venue for the wedding is the weirdest story. We are on the way to the proposal, and as I was going around the jug handles over and over again, getting us uh, intentionally lost, we passed this huge castle. And I looked over and I said, what the heck is that thing? And she said, oh, it's this wedding venue called the Legacy Castle. And I was like, internally, like burning on fire. Cause I'm like, I'm about to propose, she doesn't know, but now wedding got brought up and proposal and like, don't say anything stupid. And so I'm just like, oh, cool back to driving. So then on the way home after I proposed and we had fun and whatever, we passed it again. And I said, babe, is, is we both kind of said it. We were like, isn't it weird we passed it like on the way of the proposal and on the way home? Like we was never it, had passed it before. Wait, we don't go out that- actually the next day we were going to look at a potential It happened house. again. We, we passed it again. Passed it again. And so finally we were like, I think we should just get married there. We want that feeling of like comfort and like, you know, um, so we went smaller. It was stressful because I've cured so many different friends and acquaintances, different avenues of my life, right? Like different time periods, different states, um, Tony as well. And so it was kind of like, uh, we want everyone there, but at the same time, we just want, we want it to feel Intimate. Intimate. But I still think. For such a large venue. Yeah, it's, yeah it is a big <laughs> venue. Um, we went smaller. So a good friend, longtime friend of mine, Maria Menounos, um, she, I always like, right off the bat, when we talked about getting married, I think we were with Maria and Kevin the one day. I think so too, when and we were like. I was like, you should officiate our wedding. Yeah. She was like, oh my God, I would love to. <laughs> and so um, Maria is our wedding officiant. She went and got ordained. She went and got ordained. She is official. Yep. And so that was one element that was really special to me. Her and her husband, Kevin, have been like a huge incremental part of my life. Um, they're why I'm in, the reason I'm in the WWE, they introduced me to that whole world. Um, they were my mentors back when I was 20 years old bartending in Los Angeles. So they've been with me the entire ride. So when I found Tony and they met Tony, they like fell in love with her and the same way that I did. And so um, to have Maria kind of put into words, cause she's so good at that. Mm -hmm. um, everything that has transpired here was like the perfect fit. Family and friends by the power vested in me by the Universal Life Church in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> I now am so happy to formally pronounce Daria and Tony to be married. This ceremony is gonna be short and sweet and to the point, straight to the party. Let's welcome Mrs. and Mrs. Marinato! A lot of WWE people will be in attendance. Um, yeah, a lot, definitely. Um, I think we have like two and a half tables or three tables of just WWE people. At least, yeah. Yeah, and we, it's funny because we're like, we have like our, our neighbors coming and like old family friends and some of them had to like sit at those tables because the options were limited and like, so it's like this big wrestler next to like my little neighbor and it's gonna be, so, there's gonna be my some funny, miss, there's gonna be some funny pairings there. <laughs> We're doing an overlay, an audio overlay on our first dance. So we're gonna do our first dance as rehearsed, hopefully. And uh, then you're gonna hear like audio creep into the song and it's gonna be our daughters giving a little speech on why they love us or something. I am so happy you found someone who loves you. Happy wedding day and the first official day of our happy ever after. Thank you for being here. And then they're gonna come out and we're gonna do a quadruple first dance. Yeah, but they're actually doing that with the wedding planner, so we it will nothing. be a total surprise to us as to what they say, I, I mean. They wanted to do it. They were very adamant about um, giving some sort of speech or something, but they were both a little nervous to like get up to the podium and do it, and so they, the kids actually came up with the idea. On your way out of the wedding, there's gonna be food trucks. We're doing like, cause who doesn't leave a wedding hungry? I know there's so much food at the wedding, but then like you drink and you party and you dance, you burn like 5,000 calories on the dance floor and then you're starving. So we have pizza and donuts on the way out, which I'm so stoked for cause they're my two favorite foods, as Tony knows. I got to kind of pick that. 
Um, and then the next morning at the hotel, we're doing a whole breakfast. So it's kind of like, it's the rehearsal dinner, it's the wedding, it's the food trucks, then it's the breakfast. It's kind of like a little weekend event. But now let's start at the beginning, beginning. She stalked my Instagram. I, I followed back. I admired from afar, but we were both in previous relationships, you know, respectful. She and was then, the first one to watch my stories, the first one to like a photo, and I would screenshot it, and I'd semantics. be like. Semantics, I mean. I have the screenshots. I have the proof. Why were you looking? Who's watching your story? You're... Anyway, right? Good point. Um, but yeah, so she slid in the DMs when she got single. I was single, and uh, she just said, hey. And I was like, oh. Because so. I was like, I'm not putting too much energy into this if she's not even going to see it. She didn't think I was going to see it. But, but she it... wrote me back immediately. Oh, come on. I was like 15. I gave it like a solid 15. Anyway, I, I opened it and it was like, hey, and I was like, oh, what's this girl? Like, that's interesting. And uh, I was like, hey, what's up? And I was with my roommate at the time and he already knew about her because I had said like, there's this girl, you know, I had talked about her briefly. And um, I was like, dude, she just messaged me. And he's like, oh my God, what are you gonna say? And so I felt out the situation and it happened to be that I was gonna have a show, WWE show the next day in the Northeast. And she lived in the Northeast and I was like, Come to the show tomorrow night. I'll get you a ticket, and then I'll take you out to dinner after. And the rest is history. And I was like, this is crazy, but okay. And I was like, I'm going to go by myself and sit at this <laughs> WWE show alone, and I'm going to have the best night of my life. The first time I ever saw her in person was when I made my entrance on live TV down the ramp, and she's sitting in the first row. So I'm on TV. I'm in character, which I'm supposed to be like this badass and like real serious. And so I'm like doing my entrance, and I'm in my zone. And then I swear to God, I look. And I catch her out of the corner. She took, she stood out like a sore thumb because I, you know, I had been looking for her, obviously. But I was like, "Oh my god!" And I turned. To, <laughs> I was wrestling Bianca, and I turned to Bianca, and I was like, "Oh my god, she's so hot!" And <laughs> she started laughing, and she's like, "Oh girl, I know. I already saw her." And I was like, "Oh my god!" And so then I had to wrestle like this 15-minute match where I was like nonstop thinking about this girl meeting for the first time, watching me sweat and scream like a maniac. When I walked out and did my entrance and saw her, she had like an energy about her that was so like, oh, I don't know how to explain it. I, like mature and just like had her stuff together. And like, she just had this energy about her that I had been like wanting my whole life, but like didn't know it existed kind of thing. And it like, I don't know, she was just like such a woman. And I just saw her and felt her energy. And I was like, this is exactly, um, who I want to be with and then my mind never changed and she never let me down and it was literally only got better and better the more we got to know each other. Blending our families happened so organically. I couldn't even tell you at the point where your family became my family because it just happened so organically yeah. but I say it to you all the time. I'm just like I can't believe the way your parents parents and sisters and everyone just accepted me and the girls as their family yeah. and like the love and you know it was it's also a, something between me and her dad because I lost my dad like three and a half weeks before we met so yeah. when he just like knew about that and we spoke about it and then he was crying and I was crying we just he like took me on in like a different way and I don't I couldn't even, like, they are my family. Yeah, my family's, I mean, they're great. They just are so genuine and real. And the second they met Tony, they were in love with her. And then when they met the kids, they were like, oh my God, your kids are beautiful and so good and so smart. And so it was just such an organic thing. Like, you can't, you can't force stuff like that to happen. When I made the decision to propose to Tony, it was not just a single proposal, right? Uh, Tony has two beautiful daughters and um, I wanted them to feel very included in the wedding, obviously. And so after I proposed to Tony and gave her her ring, I had two diamond bracelets that I got made for the girls and I proposed to them as well. And so um, when I did that, I meant what I said, that I want to join as one, um, join our family as one. And so when it came time to planning the wedding, everything was kind of thought about in terms of the four of us. I think, um, Having the platform with the WWE and, you know, being in the spotlight since I was 21 when I got signed or 22, it's kind of just been like a very natural evolution in time. Um, I 
rewind back to when I came out on national television on Tough Enough on a WWE show and um, that experience and then my comfortability and my sexuality now and it's just such a it's been such a journey and an evolution and it's it's really cool and it's something that I've been able to embrace in different ways along the journey and it's definitely evolved like my emotions throughout have evolved but at the end of the day I'm just here being me and um, if people watch it and feel some sort of relatability or comfort in watching me be who I am and they get something out of that, that's amazing. It's been eye-opening even for me because I very much live in a bubble, I feel like. So once I became a part of this and my eyes were open to so many more stories and just the messages she gets on her Instagram every day of how she inspired somebody or gave somebody you know, the confidence to do something that maybe they wouldn't have done before right. or just to know that sharing your story can actually impact somebody else is sure. very almost backwards inspiring. What I love most about her, honestly, is that I've never been with someone, I've never met somebody who is so genuine in accepting and loving me for who I am the exact way that I am. She doesn't try to change me. She doesn't judge me for my annoying attributes. I mean, she literally just took me as is and was like, that's perfect for me and supports me in every facet and avenue of my life um, and really is just like my ride or die. Like she's by my side no matter what and it's unconditional and it's genuine and there's no motive. There's no nothing in it for, I mean, she's just there and she's just so genuine about it and sincere. You rehearsed that. I didn't. Nope. She did. No, I didn't. <laughs> Swear. But that's like genuinely what I love the most about you, is that I could just be myself. Oh. All right, my turn. I think the first angle would be how motivating you are to me of somebody who could doubt or not feel good enough or insecure in certain areas. The way that you just not only do you want to like do good for you, but for me and you want me to be the best I can be and you like be the best like for each other and lift each other up and like push you to go after things that you want when maybe you would be too scared to. So that's definitely one of the big ones. But also the way you are so motivated with yourself to do things. She has so many different avenues and things she wants to go after and so many dreams and she won't stop until she gets there. And that's something that so many people don't have and that's exactly what got her where she is now in the first place. And I find it very inspiring and it's a good feeling to be around somebody that has that motivation that was and she's sweet. always happy and she's always in a good mood and even when she's like you know when sometimes we're grumpy and we're cranky and then we snap and she is the same all the time and she will even if she's cranky inside she will be as sweet as ever to me or to the kids because she's like you guys don't deserve that you know you don't deserve my cranky and I'm like you're so right and that I was love so that sweet. that was very no, sweet I, yeah I love that I love you